This is a demonstration of gluing MDF together to a machine on a CNC router. I call the MDF blocks blanks. Um, here I am putting some room temperature cure epoxy. I think this is West System 105. Um, at about 1.5 ounces per square foot of joint area. I'm only putting it on one side of the joint so that air can escape through the dry MDF on the other so there are no bubbles at the joint. I'm relying on epoxy to squeeze up and fill any of the cracks. Uh, if they're real bad, I'll squeeze them in from the top like this. And now I'm using perforated release fill. This is P3, has little holes every quarter inch. This will allow me to put another stack on top and not have to worry about them becoming permanently stuck. Um, a whack of a hammer will lift free them up. These are some pieces that I have already machined to about a half inch bigger than they need to be for the final machining step. The base layer is solid but each stack going up is um, broken into pieces to make the machining more efficient and I just staggered the joints when I modeled this up. So you just get a, a reasonable amount of epoxy um, and here's the next layer with the joints staggered. These were done on the sheets of plywood to nest most efficiently. This is one inch Medex um, MDF. It's pretty heavy stuff but it cuts really nicely. And here's the final layer. A little at the joint. Now a change of gloves and come back with some Infusion Flow Mesh. This is makes a really great vacuum manifold for bagging blocks. You don't need any more than that. The bag won't stick to the epoxy too badly and um, there's a vacuum fitting that's kept well clear of where the resin might get sucked into it. And Then I flop the half of the bag that doesn't have tacky tape already around it over to make an envelope there's bag underneath the bottom block of MDF and so this will fully enclose the, the material and while it will not be bagged to the table uh, its own weight will keep it relatively flat because this is a very flat table and I won't have to worry about gluing it to the table by mistake or having to put release coat on there and now filling the bag up so there's extra where there needs to be to conform nicely and not bridge in any of those joints. And I've got this little tiny vacuum pump. It's a gassed, well less than one horsepower. And um, it runs on 110 power, pulls about 20 inches of mercury. And uh, do a quick snip to fit the vac quick connect through. And a much larger pump would um, pull this bag down quicker, but this is what I had here. And it moves about 1 CFM, which gives me time to go around and check the joints, uh, the tacky tape, the sealant all the way around to make sure there aren't any gaps. And um, make sure there's enough bag so that it doesn't bridge in any of the inside corners so it doesn't get held up by bridging green mesh. At this point I'll also make sure the stacks are lined up. It's important to glue these up on a level table, even a slight slope one way or the other and they'll all start to slide because they like to to slip around with uh, the epoxy between the layers. And, uh, holding up the plate so it doesn't get caught. Going around one final look to make sure that no bridging and it is coming down. I have to go back and fix that back fitting.
that looks pretty good. Got to make sure with a small pump that there aren't any leaks. Looks like I got it. Come back tomorrow and uh, be ready to go.